God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That he ran the fields and he shall not perish but have eternal life. That he ran the fields and he shall not perish but have eternal life. also with you thanks tyler it's great to see you man how are you today i'm doing good you know the sun is shining outside and it's, it's a good day out what about you how are you doing today i am actually doing very well too really really well it's uh it's a good day i've gotten a lot of stuff done this morning and uh, a few more things to do we've got some phone calls to make but it's it's feeling like a good day it looks like you're in the youth room man I am. I felt like it was a good place to, to be for a youth and family worship. <laughs> Sounds good. Hey, I always got to check. How's buddy? He's doing good. You know, he's actually uh, chewing on his blanket right now, keeping himself preoccupied. Good. Uh, good. good. What a good doge, you know? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. Just love that doggy. He, someday you guys have to meet. You have to meet him. He is an incredibly strong, muscular dog. He's, oh, he's got the biceps. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, and, and actually, man, I don't remember what it was. A, a couple of a couple of weeks ago, I, I got down to be with Buddy, you know, kind of almost on my knees. And the first thing he did was lick across my glasses, <laughs> like both lenses. Like, right. ah. And I, I knew that was a sign of true love. So <laughs> <laughs> he's helping you clean them. Come on. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> And, and everybody, welcome. Thanks for putting up with our silliness. Uh, we're really glad that you're here. Uh, these youth and family worship services are important to us, and I hope they are to you, too. We really wish we could be together, and, and maybe maybe sometime soon we can do that on Wednesday evenings. Uh, we're hoping that's the case. We're, we're actually aiming right now, based on our COVID task force, to try to be together by Palm Sunday in uh, probably some smaller worship settings and maybe even a little bit earlier. So keep your ears and eyes open for that. Uh, we're hoping that's the case. And then, and just remember, if you've got concerns, things you'd like to pray about or things you'd like to share, uh, don't hesitate to reach out, just, just do that. And then Tyler, uh, it's Wednesday, confirmation, right? It is Wednesday, my dudes. Uh, we're going to have confirmation at 6.30 tonight. And at 7.45, we will be having a youth group where we'll be doing uh, some games and a, and a good discussion about 
uh, modern Jesus living. Awesome. Awesome. Cool, man. Well, thanks for making that happen. And, and friends, just, just know that uh, you remain in our prayers and that's, that's not going to change. So let's, uh, let's begin our worship now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Tyler, it's yours. Okay. Let us pray. Uh, God, you so loved the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Lord God, you did not send your son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. O oh God, Father, creator of heaven and earth, forgive us for falling short of your will. Grant us the forgiveness of our sin and the cleansing of our souls. In your name. Amen. Amen. Right. Well, I'm pretty certain, Tyler, that everybody that's listening to us probably has a Bible. Oh, I hope. So if you I hope so too. If you want to play the home game with us, uh, <laughs> it's gonna be Luke chapter 13. We're gonna read verse one through nine, and then we're gonna to skip to 31 through 35. Yep, yep. So grab your Bible. If you need to pause this video, do it. But this is this is a complicated enough text that it might be cool to read along. So remember Luke 13, one through nine, and then 31 through 35. So it's up to you, T-Dog. All right. So uh, to just kind of ease you in while you're going to grab that, if you want to listen. Uh, so a lot of terrible tragedies fell upon the Jews during this time. And while some believe that it was their own fault for their lack of repentance, Jesus had a different message for them. Uh, it was to repent, not to escape tragedy, um, but that they might bear good fruit. Like, so today's lesson uh, is going to be from that gospel then. So, <clears throat> at that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will perish as they did. Were those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came looking for fruit on him and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting soil? He replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. At this at that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I will finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Thanks, Tyler. Hey, let's, let's all pray, friends. Lord God, we are grateful for the Bible and for the stories that it tells us. And we pray that uh, today we would listen to what, what's happening in Scripture and that we would uh, be willing to go a little bit deeper and dig with some, um, some integrity and honesty so that we don't always look for the simple, easy answers, but, but struggle for a little bit to find out the truth. Uh, thanks for your son, Jesus, and for his willingness to enter this world 
and ultimately uh, give his life so that when this world is done, we can join him and you in heaven above. So bless us now and keep us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So man, this is a, this is a really good story. And I'm going to say it one more time. If you don't have your Bibles out, grab them and, and turn, turn to Luke chapter 13. We've been going through this gospel of Luke and learning some really, really cool things. Um, uh, last week, uh, we heard a little bit about the Good Samaritan. What a, what a marvelous story. And now, and now uh, Jesus, on his way to Jerusalem, is encountering a couple of three big questions. The first one is, bad things happen. Why is that? Whose fault is that? And then another thing is, okay, are we, are we out of time? Or is there still enough time for us to repent and to change our lives? And, and, then, maybe, and then maybe the third one is, um, Jesus really wanted to make clear that, that he loves God's people so much that he wants to protect them in a way that um, we don't typically talk about. I mean, it, this is a, a, a very infrequent and odd biblical image to think about, about Jesus as a mother hen, <laughs> right? Right, keeping, keeping her brood under her wings. But, but he does that also in light of calling this guy, this guy uh, 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 a fox, you know, and, and saying, saying, I need to protect you like that. So it's, it's really a cool story. So bad things happen. Why is that? Um, and then um, listen, in your life, don't quit. There's enough time. And then finally, remember that in the midst of all that stuff, God is protecting us, even from the most dangerous of people. So that's that's my setup, man. Let, I, I want to hear you jump in because I'm always impressed with your in, your kind of insight and reflection on the scripture. So what what have, what have you been thinking about this stuff? That's a really good lead in because um, that just summed it all perfectly. I, I don't think it's as crazy to think of Jesus as this mother hen as we sometimes think about it. Really? Right? Really? Because, really? No, because... We are always like we're constantly told that because like Jesus comes down and he's going to like we're sheltered from all of this like it's 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 Jesus dying on the cross right. that saves us and so I imagine that as like uh, there's tons of little like pictures that people draw of like protect Jesus like hugging around someone and protecting right, right. Them. yeah yeah right. And so it's that, that is, that is more or less what Jesus is portraying for us again, is that in his own words, he's protecting his brood. He's being the shepherd protecting his sheep. It's just a different image that we're seeing. And now it's working like an umbrella to like stop all these bad things from coming at us so that they can't see us. Uh, I, never, we just I, never, I never thought about the idea of an umbrella. Yeah, that, that's a cool image, man. You know. Yeah, it's the Jesus umbrella. <laughs> I like, it. I like it. Yeah, we talked about the our. We were talking about the Lord's Prayer recently in uh, in confirmation, okay. and that is also that's we talked about how uh, forgiveness and like grace comes with that, right? We're asking for all this this temptation to not be there, yeah. and so Jesus is also being that like that barrier to try and stop. That, that like those extra pieces coming in so i that's my first little bit of that i don't think that thinking of as a as a mother hen is too is too extreme right that's that's something that we talk about constantly but this imagery is just new because jesus is saying that about us you know that's man that's like light bulb <laughs> um especially especially in light of this idea that's raised early on in the story about bad things happening, you know, uh, and and the fact of the matter is that if you are breathing, right? And are you breathing, Tyler? Got a pulse? I've got a pulse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're still going. Yeah. If you're breathing, you get a pulse, you're gonna struggle. There will be suffering. 
And everybody who breathes and has a pulse is going to say, did I do something to make this happen? And what Jesus is saying here very clearly is that that's a bit of a mystery. Sure, there are probably are things that you bring upon yourself. But there are other things that, that simply happen in this world because of the way the world works. And, and don't, don't blame yourself, don't blame God, but remember that through it all, that, that Jesus, I mean, back to that last image you shared, Jesus is there to protect us, to care for us, not to, not to help us pretend that bad things don't happen, but to say, yeah, yeah, crummy things do happen, but I'm there. I'm going to walk alongside you. I'm going to care for you. And the other cool thing I, I love, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people don't like this, this story of the fig tree, right? Um, uh, I say any Bible story that uses the word manure is a good story. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. And thanks for sharing my similar sense of humor. Tyler and I are both a little bit goofy, but you knew that before tonight. But, but isn't it amazing to think that, that if we think about God as the gardener, he says, wait a minute, let's give this tree one more chance. I mean, I, I'm grateful, maybe, maybe you are too, buddy, but are you grateful for a second chance or a third chance? Has that been a part of your life? always i'm always thankful for the the multitude of chances that i get yeah. because i mess up constantly <laughs> and so it's nice to have that like uh -huh. oh man i am not i am not a good tree right now <laughs> i am just i am so barren of anything my fruit is so sour right now there is nothing that's coming out of this right mm -hmm. but the fact that there's like this gardener the like God, we're describing this gardener who decides hey give it give it some give it some room to live give it a give it a little extra boost in its roots give it some time to grow right and like i we we see as like a uh like our lifetime if we look at like a tree that tree will grow up to its maturity in like what five years right and so it's like give it an extra year that's giving us an extra like 50 years that's that <laughs> he's like no keep going you got this. You got this. You're going to, you're going to be a good tree. And it's just like all of those chances. Yeah. I, I, I love that image, you know, and I, I must admit, I'm grateful for the second chances I've had, you know, and what I want people to hear out there, you know, it's like, um, okay, Tyler, how old are you? 23. 23. So I'm 60 years old. I'm like almost three times older than you, almost. And some of the kids that are watching this right now, they're like 12, 13. So that makes me five times older than them. And uh, one of the things I used to believe when I was a kid is that old people like me did, didn't really have anything that I needed to hear when I was a kid. But I, I've learned differently. And what I want to tell, especially our young people today, is that the God that we love and the God that loves us says, hey, yeah, you might have screwed up. You might have messed up. But listen, I'm the God of second and third chances. And I want you to, to take a deep breath and to realize that some of those things that have happened in your life, that, that wasn't your fault. But now... As you move forward, repentance isn't about um, feeling guilty or ashamed. And don't you love when I do the air quotes? That shows how old I am. <laughs> it's about it's about a new it's about a new chance, like a fresh start. It's like starting over, and and to me that's that's grace. And in the midst of all of that stuff, we got this God in the person of Jesus who's looking out for us and protecting us and saying, hey, hey, you're mine. I'm going to look out with you, look out for you. I'm going to, I'm going to defend you. I'm going to take care of you. And, and listen, if there's something that needs to change, don't feel ashamed or embarrassed. Just 
do it because it allows you to have new life, real life. There's a great quote from The Lion King. Oh, from The Lion King, yeah. From The Lion King, you know, that fantastic movie. I love The Lion King. From the 1990s. Oh. Um, yeah, see? Uh, there was, but it's, it's, there's two different portions, right? And they talk about what happens in the past, yeah. right? And that we all make mistakes. And uh, Rafiki specifically does a much better job than Timon, but it's like, uh, yes, the past can hurt, but you can that when he hits run, him with the head yeah, with the, and he hits him with the stick because he's like, oh, that hurt. It's just like, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that that happens. But it's either you can run from that or you can learn from that. And Jesus gives us that also that that example to go off and like take what we have done and then learn from what we've done so we can do better because we know that we mess up. We know that. I, I definitely cheated on a couple math tests growing up. I know that's not good. I know. I know it's not an okay thing. I know. It's but I, I recognize that I did a bad thing. And I am going to own up to it. But that also gives me the opportunity to be better about it in the future. And know that I'm supposed to be more honest about my work. And know right. that. Right, right. You know? Like, there's yeah. there's a couple bits out there where we we, we do. we But we're still good trees in this orchard yeah <laughs> i'm loving i'm loving the gospel according to lion king <laughs> tyler i man i i always appreciate your insights and thanks for this any any final parting words you'd like to share with our kids or their parents or anybody else who's listening into this thing tonight i don't i don't know i think i said my piece this time you awesome. got anything sir I just want to say uh, thank you, God, for telling us that even though we struggle and suffer, that you're with us. And thank you for second chances. And thank you for, for caring for us, for protecting us, because Lord knows we all need it. So that's what I'd say. So, hey, man, let's, let's pray. I'll pray. Dear God, thanks for hearing our prayers always. Sometimes it's pretty easy. We know what to say and how to pray it, but sometimes it's harder because um, we're struggling and suffering and, and we wonder what the heck's going on. You know, what, what's happening, Lord? Is, is it something I did? But help us to know that you're not that kind of God. You're not, you're not the kind of God that, that waits for us to mess up or screw up to punish us. Rather, you're the kind of God who says, wait a minute, here's another chance. Do the right thing. Do the good thing. Uh, not not so that I love you, but because I love you. And then and then finally, Lord, help us to remember that you're watching over us. That you're protecting us, like like that hen looking over her brood. It's a it's an interesting picture, but kind of a cool picture too. And help us to hold on to that. So, Lord, thanks for my buddy Tyler for the work that he does. Thanks for our church. We pray you'd bless us. Uh, be with all of those folks who continue to face challenges, especially with back to school stuff and, and the whole COVID thing. And especially, Lord, we pray that uh, you'd be with those who are struggling and suffering. Um, and maybe especially those who have lost loved ones because of this pandemic. Uh, help us to realize that, uh, that you're with them and you're with us too. So Lord God, all these things we pray in Jesus' name and we pray this prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember, worship is ended. Let the service begin. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks, Tyler. Peace out. Stick around for confirmation, friends. Blessings. Be well. God bless you. That's me, y'all.